So, you got a drum set, you started a band, and you got a gig. Nine times out of ten, you have to bring your own drum set to that gig, but on top of bringing your drum set, there are a few other things I would suggest bringing. Any veteran gigging drummer or musician can tell you that if anything can go wrong with your equipment, it will go wrong, and it will go wrong during a gig. There's a ton of people who have made videos showing what they carry inside of their emergency kit. And I actually just finished a video doing exactly that. I showed everything that I carry inside of my emergency kit. But I decided to scrap the video because I thought it would be better to show you how to make an emergency kit for your drum set instead of just showing you what I carry inside of mine. So I would say that there are three main categories of things you'll find in an emergency kit. And those are tools, parts, and miscellaneous. So it's pretty simple to figure out what tools you need for your drum set. All you have to do is look at the fasteners and get the right tools. The first and most obvious tool you need for a drum set is a drum key. Second, I'd recommend looking at the snare and mainly the butt plate for the strap. To adjust this one, we need a Phillips head screwdriver, but also to attach it to the snare, it uses a flat head fastener, so we'll add both of the screwdrivers to the list. And then I would come around to the other side and look at the strainer and see what that uses, and mine uses a drum key, so I'm good. Next, I'll look at your lugs and see how those are attached to the drum. Some drums just use a regular screw head like a Phillips head, uh, I have a drum set that uses a bolt to hold them on, but this drum set uses a combination of a hex head and a Phillips head. I already have a Phillips screwdriver written down for the butt plate of the snare, so if a lug screw comes loose, I could easily just use the screwdriver to tighten it back up. So if a lug screw does come loose in the middle of your gig and you want to tighten it up in between a set, then most likely you're going to be rushed and in a hurry. So there is a higher chance of you stripping out the head of that screw, especially if you don't have the right size screwdriver. So if your drums use these style fasteners to attach the lugs to the drums, then I'd recommend a nut driver instead. There's less of a chance of you stripping out the head of that screw with a nut driver, but on the flip side, it is easier to over torque that screw and break it off. So no matter the tool you use, you have to be careful, but I would recommend a nut driver. Next, I'll look at your pedals and see if there's another type of fastener that you haven't seen yet. So I would be most concerned about how the chain attaches or the strap depending on what kind of pedal you have, and also how the beater attaches. So with this pedal, I just need a drum key to adjust all of this stuff, but yours might be different. I have seen older beaters that use an Allen set screw to hold the beater in, so that will be a good thing to have. But of course, just check out your pedal and see what you need. And then for the hi-hat pedal, the only thing that's different is there is a nut right there. So if one of those nuts were to come loose, instead of packing a socket just for that one thing, that is something I'll bring a pair of pliers for. And that's because a socket is only good for that one size nut or bolt and you could pack a full socket set if you wanted to but it's really bulky and heavy so i'll not recommend it so again instead i would recommend a pair of pliers because not only can you adjust a nut or bolt you can do a lot of other things with them say you have a stubborn wing nut that won't come off take a pair of pliers and it'll loosen right up and also another thing you can do is just take a pair of sticks like this and put it around the wing nut and it'll have more leverage to take it off and there are some times you can't get your sticks into certain spots like right here to do that trick. Or if the bottom nut on your hi-hat clutch is stuck, uh, even if you could get a pair of sticks in there, you wouldn't be able to get a grip on it because it's round. So that is another good spot for pliers. So those are the only tools I need for my drum set to adjust things and your kit might be a little bit different. But on top of those tools, there's a few others that I like to carry. First is a knife and everyone knows the purpose of a knife, so I'll talk a little bit more about its uses when we get to the miscellaneous section. Then second and the last thing I'll include in the tool section is a flashlight. Everyone's cell phone has a flashlight on it these days, but say you leave it at home, left it in the car, or it's dead, it really helps to have a flashlight. And I like this one because it's like a regular flashlight and also has this little light bar thing. But the best part about it is it has a magnet on it. So pretend you're setting up your kit and you need some light, just slap it on a stand and you're good to go. Try doing that with your phone. These are just a few parts that I carry with me and of course, you could carry more, you could carry less, it all depends on your drum set. So something I'd recommend everyone to carry are cymbal felts. I only carry a few of these because if you think about it, you don't need felts on top of your cymbals. The only time you really need a felt on top of a cymbal is say you have a splash cymbal or a china that you don't want to, you know, wiggle around. Or say you have a bell or splash stacked on top of a cymbal, that's the only time you really need a felt on top. 
Also, this may seem pretty obvious, but if you're in a pinch and need another felt, you can take a thicker one and just peel it in half and you'll have two. I also carry a few wing nuts and it's the same thing as the felts. You really don't need these on your cymbal stand. The only time you'd really need a wing nut are in the same scenarios I stated with the felts. Along with the felts and wing nuts, a cymbal sleeve is a very good thing to have because this is the part that actually protects your cymbal. And again, this is a loose part that is very easy to lose. Next is a hi-hat clutch, and if you think about it, this is a pretty vital part of your drum set, especially depending on what type of music you play. But just like any other of these parts, they're easy to lose, so that's why I carry one. Next are snare straps, and just like any of these other parts, these are a very vital part to your drum set. Next are tension rods, and everyone knows that these like to back out and loosen and detune your drums. And if you were to lose a tension rod during a gig, first of all, you probably wouldn't notice. But more importantly, you can still play on a drum set if it's missing a tension rod. It's not like it's unplayable because it's missing one of these. But if you have a few extra, you can put them back on. This is the screw that keeps the bass drum beater on the pedal. And honestly, I'll say that this is probably one of the most vital parts of your drum set. Without this little screw, your bass drum is useless, so I'd definitely carry an extra. Along with that, I try to carry a bass drum beater. I was actually at a show where the drummer, the head of his bass drum beater flew off and obviously he didn't notice, so he kept playing. But with the head gone, it was just the shaft, obviously, so when he played it, the shaft went straight through the bass drum head. So thankfully, the guy had an extra bass drum beater and he just flipped the bass drum around. But ever since I saw that, I started to carry an extra beater. And last in the parts category, which I don't know if you would even consider this a part, but I have some moon gel just in case I need to dampen my drums a little bit more. Even if you're a non-believer in moon gel, I would still recommend carrying some because even if your drums sound fine in this room where you practice, you might go to the venue, set up your drums, and they sound completely different. So if you don't have time to retune them at the gig or say you can't get them to sound how you want, this is a lifesaver. And last we have all the miscellaneous stuff. I like to carry a few extra earplugs. I have a set that's like form fit to my ear, so if I forget those then I'll wear these. Duct tape or gaffer's tape is a good thing to have. Uh, this is just a little roll I made. If you unroll it and roll it up on itself, you get a little bundle like this, so it's uh, a lot smaller than a full roll. But this is good if you need to tape your set list somewhere. Maybe one of your cymbal stands is acting funny and it keeps sliding down. You can put a giant wad of tape around it so it acts as a stop. If you wear headphones for a backing track or a click track, you can tape the cable to your back so it doesn't get in the way. If you don't have any moon gel, you can use it to muffle your drums. And there's a million other uses for tape, so it's a good thing to have. I also carry a few zip ties with me, and just like tape, there's a million and a half uses for zip ties. And similar to zip ties, I'm going to start carrying some of these cable ties. These are actually new to me. Hosa was kind enough to send me these along with some of their other products. So I've yet to use these at a gig, but it's basically like a Velcro zip tie. And then I always carry a Sharpie. Maybe you forgot to write down your set list. Maybe you need to make a change to your set list. Maybe you need to write a note to yourself on the snare drum head. A Sharpie is a very useful tool. And then I also carry a pencil so when someone bars your sharpie and it disappears or dries up or runs out of ink, you'll have a pencil as a backup. This also reminds me to talk about the knife. You might need to sharpen your pencil or say you taped your whole drum set together because it fell apart, cut off all the tape with that, or if you need to cut off some zip ties, a knife is very handy. That is everything that I carry inside of my emergency kit and for those that already have an emergency kit set up, you might carry something different. And if you do carry more stuff or different stuff, then please leave a comment because I'd love to hear about it. But more importantly is so other people can see and get ideas. But we're not done yet because we need to find a container to carry all the stuff. So this is everything I carry laid out nice and neat. And a lot of people like to use tackle boxes just because there's a lot of little compartments to fit all this stuff. But personally, I'm not a big fan of tackle boxes just because they're so big and bulky. But if I did want to carry more stuff, then a tackle box would be a good option. Something else I see a lot of people use is just a small little plastic toolbox which would easily fit all this stuff inside of it but what i use is much smaller which sure it has its drawbacks but also has some benefits so this is the box that i use as you can see it's pretty small but i can get everything inside of it so let me show you So you probably notice I struggled just a little bit to fit everything inside of here, and that's one of the downsides of using a smaller box. Yes, everything fits in here and the lid closes fine, but all this stuff really only fits in this box one way. 
So really you have two options when it comes to picking a container or a box. You can choose something that's small and compact, but is a little more cluttered and say you need the pliers, you need to move all this stuff out of the way to get the pliers, you use the pliers and then you have to put them back, you know, the way they came in order to fit everything else that you took out. Or you can carry something bigger and be more organized and fit more stuff. But that is your decision to make. So real quick, I'll just recap everything that's inside of here. Sharpie, drum key, knife, moon gel, flashlight, bass drum beater, screwdriver. And also I'll talk about the screwdriver real quick. I would recommend getting a screwdriver like this that has multiple bits inside of it. So that way you save on space. This is a nine in one screwdriver, meaning that there are nine tools inside this one driver. There is a Phillips bit, a slotted bit, a 516 nut driver, a smaller slotted bit, a smaller Phillips head, this is a number one, the other one was a number two, a number one square head, and a number two square head, or Robertson if you're from Canada. I guarantee you will never use this bit on a drum set, so just throw it away. A quarter inch nut driver, and I believe this is a three eighths nut driver. Pliers, cable ties, zip ties, pencil, felts, and cymbal sleeve, earplugs, lug nuts, hi-hat clutch, and the tension rods and screw that holds the bass drum beater on. And I almost forgot about the snare straps. Over the years, I've gotten a lot of requests to make this video, so hopefully you found it interesting, and if not, hopefully you at least learned something. So again, if you have already made a kit like this and carry something different, or carry more stuff, or use a different box, or do anything differently, definitely leave a comment so other people can see and get ideas. There are also times when you don't have the right tools or the right materials to fix something on the spot, and if you often find yourself in those situations, then I'll suggest you check out my drum hack playlist. But I'll leave it at that, so feel free to continue the conversation in the comments. But that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Do do do